particular servant came in a very interesting way. Uh, the Lord has a wonderful sense of humor. Well, first of all, let's, let's, let's establish that. I said, Lord, it's 4.40 in the morning. All right, you woke me up, so we ready to go. He said, go back to sleep. Lord, it's 6.15 in the morning. Oh, hey, great, a couple of extra hours. It's great, Lord. Go back to sleep. I said, Lord, we know we at church today. He yeah, said, Lord, 7.17 came. Still, no word. And I will guarantee you this. If he doesn't give me a word, I do not stand here. Know that. Because what's the point? You'd just be listening to me. Wouldn't that be a waste of time? <laughs> but it came a little after 8 o'clock. He said, there is order. It's okay, Lord. Turn to Revelation chapter 1. We have been misguided a little bit, either by the presentation or our understanding, about the order of church. Now, uh, as we understand that, that, that God, uh, God's, uh, we are God's husbandry, we are God's building. Uh, the church it, it encompasses all of the, those who believe, right? It's, it's that type of entity. But there is an aspect that keeps order in that entity that sometimes we want to skip over because it's not convenient for us. But God said you can't skip over because you cannot appreciate, you cannot withdraw from the, 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 tr uh, the vaults of heaven if you're out of order. Just because you think you're in a principle, the principle is deeper than what you think it is. So we're going to Revelation chapter 1, and he made this point in verse 3. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. The Lord says, Blessed is the he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Then he made a statement in verse 4. He said, John, to what? The seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace, from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the what? Seven spirits which are before his throne. He made a point. He said, look, we are a church, but there are churches. Amen? He said, first of all, I want you to talk to the seven churches, the seven entities called church in Asia. It didn't mean that they went away from the principle of all of us being one in Christ. But there are churches that are established. And this is the order God put this in. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. We, we need to see this because it's going to play a major role in how we function as we grow. As we collaborate, we need to understand there are things called churches. That, do, and that doesn't break the concept of the church as one. Okay? Please understand that. How many times have we talked to you about there were 12 tribes of Israel? Israel was Israel, but it was divided into what? 12, 12 tribes. For a reason. We're going to find the reason God does that. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, God knows the human race. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we begin at verse 4. He said, now there are diversities of gifts. What does diversity mean? Differences. Differences, differences right? There are diversity of gifts, but what? The same spirit. He said, and there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of what? Operations. Operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Amen. Now, my question is this. Why would we have a problem with that? It is incredible that, that, that we can't grab the concept of that it's all in all. We're all one body, but there are different operations. They are what's called churches. There was the church of Thessalonica. There was the church of what? Galatia. There was a church in Rome, right? And Ephesus. They were local bodies that understood the concept of the entire 
group together. They collaborated one with another, but they were churches that were had different administrations and different operations. It is necessary for that to be the case. The culture of Rome was different from the culture of Ephesus. And they needed the what we call foot soldiers on the ground in Rome in order to deal with Roman church members. Amen? Let's keep reading. Go to Acts. We have to get this concept and embrace this concept. It does not break the principle of all of us being of the church of God. Okay? I don't want this argument to, to people to say, well, we're all one church. Yes! In that sense. It's like Israel was all one nation. But they were 12 tribes. There were seven churches in Asia. See, that's why you, you, you can't administer from a fault. And that's the point we need to understand. It's hard for, it's like I went to another church and they started, you know, taking members. Started preaching the Memphis doctrine somewhere else. How would that go over? Wouldn't be good, would it? It would be bad on my part. Why? Because they are churches separated by the Spirit of God and appointed uh, to, to do the things that they were appointed to do. We got it. We got to see this. And hopefully by the time we finish, we'll, we'll understand. Let's go to the book of Acts. Acts 14. Because if we are going to collaborate. If we're going to be a great nation, we need to learn this principle. And we need to learn how to operate in this principle. Because if not, it will fail, we will fall. Will it be ever learning and never coming into the understanding of the truth? Acts chapter 14. Let's go to verse 21. Acts 14, 21. He said, and when they had preached the gospel to what? That's the city. Oh, so they could, you know, they were evangelists, weren't they? Mm -hmm. What do evangelists do? Evangelize. They evangelize. They go from city to, city to city to city to place to place. That's the role of an evangelist. Now, a good evangelist raises up the church. And when he leaves, the church is established in what? That city. I said, okay, we gotta make sure we got somebody to lead this to. You know, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. An evangelist that goes into a city and just leaves is a bad evangelist. Because then now what? You're gone. I've seen modern day evangelists do that on purpose to make sure that they contact him. They become the God or, or they, be, they they become a, a pseudo pastor all over the nation. Because they are important. God's way is not like that. He said, establish this thing in that snap. Do you know that an evangelist has a role, and then there are roles in the church, in that city church, that we need to kind of understand what these things are? Because I'm trying to get over this concept to you all. We are not a glorified Bible study. We understand that? We have Bible study, don't we? Okay. And we have a good time in Bible study. We are more than a Bible study group. And we need to stop treating this church like it's a Bible study group. Okay? Because when you're in the mindset of a Bible study group, everything is everything. No, no rules. We just do what we want to do. There's nowhere in the scripture where God acts like that. Amen? Oh, let's keep reading. He said, In that city it had taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. And when they had what? Ordained, Ordained them elders in what? 
church. Every church implies that there's more than one. Amen? Amen. So we can have more than one church campus and be okay in the, in the scope of God. In every church, and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. So we see there is a structured order to how God operates with his people. The book of Acts is dedicated to the, the, the teaching of how the church developed and what the order and structure of the church is. we got to see that. Because if we don't, it's going to fall and we're not going to get from heaven what it's designed to give us. If we are going to sit here and think that we are in somebody's living room and we can do what we want to do because we feel like it's okay with us, we are going to fall and we're going against the way of God. Now, emphasize again, God's church is one. Amen? Amen. I, I, I avoid the word universal. <laughs> but all of us who believe in God is part of, we are part of his church. But they are local bodies based upon this. And that's how God set it up. If we don't like it, who should we argue with? No one. And some people like to argue with God. <laughs> Go ahead, man. I don't think that's going to work for you. Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. God makes this statement in 1 Corinthians 14 33. See, that's why when we see this element creep in, we stand up. We were talking to the young brothers last night. Uh, about the role we play. We have to see the wolf coming before the wolf gets there. And if the wolf gets in the midst of it, we have to do what? Chase the wolf off. Right? And expose the wolf to what it is. So the sheep will be like, hey, hey wolf over there. <laughs> right? Because if all the sheep's eyes are looking for the wolf, we stay safe. Amen. That's why a church is a training ground. To teach people about Christ. Not to make some man glorified. It's about to give somebody a relationship with Christ so he can use them as well. But he said in verse 33 of 1 Corinthians 14, For God is not the author of confusion. But of what? Amen. Peace and in one church of the saints. All churches. All churches of the saints. Yes. And in verse 40 he says, let all things be done high. We must understand that God has established an order. Yes. We must walk in that order. And if we find ourselves resisting the order, we find ourselves resisting God. And that's not a good thing. So we all right so far? Amen. Go to 1 Timothy. See, as, this, as we develop, as we move forward, as we combine efforts, we're going to need to know this. We're going to need to stay in this. Because this is, this is the... This is our hope because it's the instruction of God. It will keep us from many problems, from many issues. It will keep things from happening. And we don't know why it happened. Because we didn't know the order. Amen? Amen. And you don't have to be old to know the order. But you, if you're old, you need to know the order. If you've been around a little while, you need to know order. No. And if this church falls into order, you're going to see some mighty works being done. See, order is the key to it all. Order in God's church, order in your home, the order of the universe. The universe didn't, didn't just decide it wants to do something new, does it? You don't see Saturn just say, you know, I'm about sick of going around this circle. I want to go do something else today. Everybody obeys the order of God except man. <coughs> And now man's church. Because 
the people of God, the ministers of God, tend to have a selfish point of view. And we want ourselves to be satisfied. You see people who what be termed as what? Church hoppers. I don't like that. I don't like what they talk. They'll be okay, they'll be okay, and all of a sudden they hear something. I don't like that. They didn't say it wasn't of God. They just said they don't like that. I'm going to go find me a church that's going to sing to me and say pleasant words to me because, you know, I don't really want to change that. <coughs> I, you know, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay with that, that stuff you're talking about. Yeah, we need to love Jesus. I'm okay with that. But when you start telling me I need to change my life, I'm out of here. So what happens when we say we have to set the house in order? Will we get out of here again? Will we get upset with it? And say, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I need to be able to do what I feel like doing. God gives you that right, doesn't he? Yes. And we will never, <laughs> God said, don't ever set up a dictatorship in my house. Haven't we been there before? But they fall. But because they fail, because we've been there, we tend to go to the opposite direction. And that is, oh, we just, anybody who says that there's an order, uh uh, they try to take over. God says there's an order in my house. Now let's find this order, okay? Is there an order in your house? Most homes don't have the order of God. When the home is in order, don't you know how easy the church is? Do you know if everybody's home was in order, my job would be, whew, I'd be coming over to your house. <laughs> hey, talk to me. What y'all got going on here? That's great, man. But the church's job is to help the houses to be in order. Now, if the church is fighting to stay in order, then he's got, they got to fight that before they can get to what the church purpose is. We need to stop having to fight that so we can be about God's business. Amen. 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 Where are we going? First, first Timothy. First Timothy. Let's go to first three. We're going to be in first Timothy. First Timothy chapter three. We begin in verse 14. The Lord said, These things write unto you, unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. Which is what? The, the church, church of the living God. God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Do you think that God would place that declaration on his church and not have an order? It's the pillar and what? And ground of what? It must be rock solid in its operations. It has to be. Because it's where people come to find out the truth. We have to be operationally grounded. And that's not always the case. But God says, I got a way. And the reason I put it this way is because this way is perfect. And we're going to have a lot of people kick against the way. Is that unusual? Most of us kick against God's way all the time, though. Then we start coming up with new philosophies because we ran over somewhere else. Oh, they don't do that over there. And then you're going to try to bring that in here. You all have seen the kind side of Pastor Sean. You've seen the patient side. You haven't seen the warrior yet. And when things start to come in and start trying to pick off the sheep, it's going to be a little different. Okay? But what we want to do is make sure all of us are seeing what he sees. So all of us can be in the order he asks us to be in. Okay? So let's not get to that. Let's not have to worry about that, Donna. You might not leave the house. You say, oh no, he prays. Let's stay in 1 Timothy 3. And we'll go back up to 1. He said, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, now a bishop the Ecclesiastes, it, 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 it is got a few definitions, and we're going to look at a few of those definitions, okay? I know, when you think of bishop, what do you think of? Some people think of pastor. What? Leader of multiple churches. Leader of multiple churches. What does the Bible say the role of a bishop is? This is what we're going to find out, okay? 
Okay? He said, the, if the man who desires the office of a bishop, now, when he desires it, he's not trying to go after it as if, you know, I want that job because it pays a lot of money. He wants to be of the character of a bishop. That's why he said it's a good thing to desire to want to be that Catholic. But he said, uh, he, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, and did not say one wife at a time, well. vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Now, the reason behind this is because the seat of a bishop must be right. The seat is always going to be right. The person sitting in it must match the, the seat. Yes. Because it's the seat that guides the church. Because the seat is connected to heaven. Amen. We get that? Yes. I did not say the man is guiding the church. It's the seat that guides the church because the seat is ordained by God. And if, as long as the person occupying who have been what, ordained by God to sit there, as long as they're connected, the church will be all right. And he gave us a description so everyone could see if the man sitting in the seat is acting seat-worthy. Is that right? Yeah. That takes ego out of the way, doesn't it? It takes personality out of the way, doesn't it? If you don't like the person, does that matter? I don't like the way they present. Is he doing this? Is he operating under, under the operation manual of God? Because if he is, you're in a good place. I know some people, some, some, some people like pastors that, you know, my, 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 my dear brother there, different style, like, people like that style. Amen. I know you one thing, you're not going to sleep in his church. <laughs> That's for sure, isn't it? Hey, wonderful, wonderful experience. Right? We have a good time with, with, with Pastor Shaw. Some people like uh, uh, the, the style of, 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 of like a pastor uh, bets. You know, a, a, a way he comes at things. Some people say uh, Pastor Smith comes at it in a way I can understand. And, and, and even some people say, well, Pastor Shaw, you, you, you come in a way I can understand it. Well, whatever it is, it has nothing to do with the personality. As long as this bishop, as long as this person is operating under the manual of God, Amen. you're going to be all right. Amen. But it's at this local level is when they operate. See, a shepherd is not a, 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 a shepherd of many fields. Okay, I'll be back Tuesday. I'm over here Tuesday. I'll be over here Thursday. That's not what a shepherd does, does it? Right. The wolf sits back and says, okay, he won't be here Tuesday. And often, oh, we often find it funny that I go to other churches. I always have people pulling at me, saying, "Pastor Shaw, uh, can, you, can you? Can you? I want some counsel on this." Hey man, I said, "What, what church did you attend?" Oh, you know, I remember here. I remember. I said, "What counsel did you get from the shepherd?" Well, they, he told me. I said, well, "You know what? Go back to the shepherd, because I'm going to tell you the same thing." He is un you are under his charge. He prays for you every day. He knows everything about you. Just because you didn't like the counsel you got from him, is it bad counsel? No. See, man, that's why when I go places, people are educating him. Because he is subject to say anything. Because that's the truth. I'm not trying to pastor somebody else that ain't in this church. Why would I do that? And this church is a little unusual because we got a phone ministry. No. Yes. <laughs> and that means we wide open. <laughs> and I get calls from everywhere. Praise the Lord. I love it. You can be part of this church and don't live here. Can't you? But there are rules and order of this body that we are going to go by. Amen. Amen. We got we got brothers. San Antonio, we got brothers in St. Louis, we got folks in Tennessee, Nashville, Weston, we got folks everywhere, and it's wonderful. But we all want to abide by the rules of God. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to set in this order. Now, I know it might hurt a little bit. You might get a little understanding, you might get a little problems, you know, but we can work through it, right? Because love is the motivator. Amen. Amen. All right, let's be real. He said, verse 3, he's not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy of filthy lucre, but what? Patient. Patient. Not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all what? Great. Great. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Amen. Think about that. I have two sons. Let's say my sons were drug addict, serial fornicators. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a problem? Mm -hmm. Now I know they're not, because I would have heard about it by church members. There are people who look to make sure <laughs> I, uh, mm, I'm gonna find something. We pretty open folks. You know, Shaw family, we pretty open. Me and we are what we are. Okay? Yeah. But if that is going on in my, I would have to what? Get out of the seat. Seat got to be pure. The seat got to be right. Because the seat is what steers the ship. Amen? So this is what we're doing. This is why it is so important that you just don't put people in places. Amen? Amen. Okay, we, we look at, we, we'll find this. See, let's, let's go down to it. Verse 6, not a novice. Wonder why. Least being lifted up with pride, he fall into what? Condemnation of the devil. When you, you know, you see these young, young preachers, young pastors, 25, 28. Oh, he's a superstar. Look at him. He knows how to work the crowd. He's a good man. He's a, he's a novice. Only because he doesn't have the experience of resisting the pride thing that comes with the seat position. All of a sudden, the church grows to be a thousand under his rulership. Do you know it'd be hard to talk to him? Because your ego is going to be huge. You can't be a novice. You have to have an exper experience relationship with God so you don't fall for that. How many women come up to these people? That's what we talked about earlier. All these closed doors on the side of the hallway. Oh, well, Pastor. Whew. Man, if I could find some man like you. So y'all never been to church like that. <laughs> it happens, okay? <laughs> and most novices fall. They don't want to. They don't even know the fault. Then all of a sudden the church starts going the wrong way. And then we got excuse doctrine like, well, you know, we all sin. Now, what happens if the man starts veering to the right? What is the church responsibility? Pray for us. Pray. Pray. Not, mm, I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know about this, don't you? And then you go around and tell everybody about this. Your responsibility is to pray. My responsibility is to pray. And say, Lord, fix this. You'll see. Something's wrong. Because you don't know what made that person do that. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So if you pray, things can get worked out, can't they? Amen? All right, let's keep reading. He said, uh, uh, verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are which are without. What does that mean? Reputation. He's got to have a good reputation. That means he's fair everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's bishop everywhere. Right? Amen. You'll never, be able, you'll never be able to do this. I saw a pastor show on Bill Street at 2 in the morning with a drink in his hand and a rib in his mouth. That'd be a bad report, wouldn't it? Yeah. Me sitting here telling you that you should really kind of take care of that body and you should kind of do it this way and, and you shouldn't be drunk. You know, that'd be a little problem, wouldn't it, man? So that, he, that, that person has to be consistently that person all the time. Is that bad? No. We're describing this so you'll know what the role of the seed is. So when things get squirrely, that, 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 you know, we know what to do. And we're also telling you this thing because there is an order in God's church. The man 
in the seat must be in order, just like the church needs to be in order. Amen? Amen. What's his role? Go to Jeremiah. What's the role? We're going to get out of here just so. Are we making sense? Mm -hmm. The only reason he gave us this is because we're about to move into a different position. And we need to know that there's an order. And it's a wonderful order. <laughs> if anybody desires to see the bishop, come on. Mm. Learn it. Study it. Pray it. And if God ordains you to do that, amen. Amen. But let me warn you about something. It's not what it looks like. Hmm. And that young man came up to me in tears. He said, I want to do what you do. Hmm. My response was, give up everything. That's what Bishop has to do. Give up everything. Everything? Yes. Everything. Your career, give it up. Your thoughts about what you think you need to be, give it up. Your family, give it up. Didn't that sound fun? Man, I, I give up everything. Your paycheck, give it up. Hold oh, no, no, on, no, come on, bro, come on. <laughs> Your life, give it up. If this is what you, this is this, this is what you want to do. But there is an order, God will always have someone who will do that. Right? And the bishop is not a, 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 the pastor is not a life, it's not like the Supreme Court. You know, you pastor for life. It, no. Matter of fact, it's not good to have a pastor 20 years. You need to change, don't you? God, and God will do that. God will say, okay, now you do this and let this person do that. Because let me tell you, from this side of the desk, You'll go crazy. Your health, everything. Because you carry souls with you everywhere you go. So if you desire office of a bishop, that's good. Keep reading. Keep praying. But God said he'd do something. He said, Jeremiah chapter 3. He said, I'm going to do something. Because this is the order of my church. He said, in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14... Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14, he says, Turn, hold backsliding children, save the Lord. Why? For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a, a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Verse 15 said, I will what? Give you pastors according to whose heart? Oh. So who chooses it? Isn't that safe? That you can't go and just establish yourself as one? And they told me I can speak because I think I'm going to be a pastor. God says, I choose you. And it's reason because that's an order. Because that man has to be chosen and has to understand that that's this connection they got to keep. He said, I'm going to send you pastors after my own heart. Which will what? Steal from you. No. And give you false doctrine. Is that what it says? <laughs> that scripture says, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The role of a pastor is that. Amen? Amen. Go back to Acts. See, when we're done today, we're going to be done with this. Because we're going to act upon it. And when, when where you fall in that act, that's on you. And you know me, I'm not afraid. You want to fight? Come on. I'm not going, Lord, what do you want me to do? He has yet told me to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> I'm waiting on that day. I know it's Larry, just knock him out. <laughs> After all these years, he didn't say that. Matter of fact, he said, love it. Hold it. Uh -huh. Careful. Yeah. Make sure that he understands me. But Lord, he kicked me in the teeth four times. You still got teeth, don't you? Love him still. That's the type of people we're going to be. Amen? Amen. 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 Relax. We're going to go to Acts chapter 20. 
the role of this person. Verse 28 says, Take heed thereof unto yourselves, and to all the flock, he's talking to the elders, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you what? Overseers. Ooh, that's a word we don't like. Overseer. Y'all been watching Roots. <laughs> And all these slaves, what, 12 years of slave, 20 years of, you know, something. We've been watching that. So the word overseer doesn't sit well with us, does it? Because none of us want to be told what to do. Or well, one of us, we don't want to respect the idea, uh, accept the idea that there is a role somebody has to play and you might not be the boss. I'm an overseer. And the, the overseer is to do what? to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Christ has purchased this church with his own blood. The role of this overseer is to feed the church. Amen. Overseer. Anybody? We're not ready to accept that yet. I see it in your eyes. You don't see me. You know what? That's all. Right. Whose order is this? So we're going to kick against this, huh? Okay, no. Oh, yeah, we are. Soon as Pastor Shaw say something you don't want to do, or try to, they say, look, I have to put this is not quite right. You might want to, uh, who do you think he is? <laughs> do you think it's fun to do that? No. Mm -hmm. no. To say, I've been praying all night, Lord, I, I got to say, call that person. You need. To say this. You know that's a that is a horrible feeling. When you you think anyway that that person is going might not speak to you the rest of their natural lives. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened. That's what happened before. We've had people here, haven't we? That's not among us anymore. Because we had to go and weep with them, hold their hand and say, this is not, this. the Lord is saying this, and, and it's not me, I promise, I couldn't come up with this, this is, what, and we go to the Word, and, hmm, I ain't going to church no more. Mm -hmm. And these are the people you cried for. These people, you see what's going on, and you see the direction they're going, you say, Lord, please don't let them go that way. Mm -hmm. And they turn around and say, I don't want to see you again. That's the road. But God called him an overseer. Let's call him First Peter. Chapter 5 and see what else he called. We got to accept the role and the structure that God has put in place. And I promise you, there are many churches. Aren't there? Amen. This city in particular has more churches per capita, capita than any city in America. Doesn't have more churches in New York, but based on the population, we got a lot of churches. So there are a lot of churches. There are a lot of churches inside the house of God, right? So I, I, I don't want to put you in a position where you're just without a church. But there's an order. And we're going to stand by this order. Amen? Amen. And be okay with it. You know, there are different administrations and different operations. Isn't that okay? You know, we don't have to be carbon copies of anybody else. No. Does it make them wrong? No. Does it make us wrong? No. But what we require in this place is we don't become judgmental. Just because you didn't do it the way we did, it doesn't make you, we don't turn our nose up on you. I told you we're going to be this church that's going to show love and understanding, but principle to the world. Even among our brothers, we're going to do this. Because we're going to be in order. Amen? Amen. Hebrews. We want Hebrews? First, 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 first Peter. Peter. Let's go to First Peter. First Peter chapter 5. Let's start at verse 1. Here we go with the elders again. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. What's the instruction? Feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Which is where? Among um, you. Is that an important point or we just skip over that? No. Feed the flock of God that is among you. Why? 
because you know that flock. And he said what? Taking the oversight thereof. There that word is. Take the responsibility for it. Take the oversight. Because it, you got to make sure this thing is working the way I told you to make it work. Amen? Take the oversight. Then he told you how to take the oversight. Which is very important. He said, not, not by constraint. We can't go around forcing you to do anything. Well, you need to be doing this because I'm doing this. No. You can't do that by constraint, but what? Willing. He said, I got to be willing to do that. I can't even feel the, the, the pressure saying, well, Lord, I guess I got to go do this. I said, I don't need you to do it. That's not me. You're not going with a free heart. I can't use you. That's right. He said, I want you to be willing. He said, not by what? Not yeah. filthy lucre. What's filthy lucre? Pay off or something. Now, we really ain't got that to worry about right here. Show <laughs> <laughs> And some of the largest contributors to this movement know one thing. There is no respected person. If you are right, you get the right hand. If you are wrong, you get the same, hey, well, man, that just ain't right. We don't go into this thing. And any bishop or any pastor, there might be some pastors in this audience, just make sure you understand that there is no respected person. Don't you dare look at the check the checking account when you ministry. Because you'll be like this. Well, yeah, I can't be too hard on them because they just wrote a $5,000 check. And God will hit you with the back of your head. <laughs> he said, if they are incorrect, just like the one with the $5, guess what? You say the same thing to both of them. That's why you can't be in love with money. Amen. Amen. Now let's keep reading. He said, filthy looking, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. What's being lord? You ever seen anybody try to be lord over something? Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, don't do that. I want you to be an example, because you are supposed to show them me. Amen? Amen. Okay. And he said, and, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Why is that part of this thing? That's why it's so important for the elders to have some sense. Because if the younger want to fall in the line and fall in the order, oh, that would kill them. But I'm doing what you said, and guess what? But God will cover the younger, even in this circumstance. He said, you're doing what I ask you to do. I'm going to send you an elder. I'm going to send you some older people because you're trying to follow my principles. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. But elders, older people, know that the, 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 the young people are trying to do what God says do. They want to submit. They, they, they said, look, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. That's part of being an elder, having enough sense to know that you don't have to go through all that production that I'm the oldest. You be that. And part of that is the kindness and being subject one to another. Amen? Amen. Yea, all of you submit to one to another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So all the older people, you should be the most humble people in the world. You have to be. Experience should have taught you that. You know, we've been around a little while. We have people in this audience that's been around a little while. We've seen a few things. We've seen men try to establish doctrine and church protocol. And in the 30-some years we've been in this, we hadn't seen it work yet. Because men try to do it. We're trying to let the Holy Ghost do it. Because there is an order, there is a protocol, but it's already been done. Do we have to add to it? Do we have to take anything away from it? We're just going to be what God asks us to be. Now, if you don't mind, give me one more scripture. Let's go to the book of Acts. See, there's a, then there's some other, other positions in this order that need to be taken care of. Amen? We, we, we passed the bishop now. We all right with the, the, that aspect. Okay. 
But there's other things going on in the church. Amen? Amen. Now, in all of our, we read, what was the gender? Now, now, did we say there's no female ministers? I didn't say that. I mean, is it a bunch of them? Yes. We need them. Don't. We've read somewhere that women can say things to people that men don't even con haven't even conceived of. Amen? But there are no female pastors in the Bible. Yeah? We read about one the other day was confused and said she didn't, she didn't know if she liked men or women, but she's going to go with women, and, and, but she's the pastor of the church. Oh. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Of course she's confused. First of all, you put in a position that's impossible to serve. You're going to tell a, 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 a female, you are the head of this church. Okay? But when you go home, you're not the head of your house. Mm -hmm. That's confusion. Wouldn't it be? Yes. I mean, women, is that, is, I mean, I'm not a woman. So wouldn't that be a little weird? Yes. I, I, you know, I'm telling all these people, it, but this is, this is, and I go home and I got it. Yes, sir. Or, uh, okay. That never works, does it? No. So, as long as we are here, guess what? We're going to have one gender in that seat. We're going to have many ministers. Amen, Lord. Okay. About time to go. Let's go to Acts chapter 6. <laughs> need the library to turn the lights off when it's time to leave. Do by the way. <laughs> Acts chapter 6. Let's start at verse 1. Acts chapter 6, verse 1, it says, And in these, those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, because the church was doing what it was supposed to do, those arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because, what? Their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. See, when the church starts to grow and move and starts to interact, there's a lot of things that have to be taken care of. Good thing, that's when the church is doing what it's supposed to do. People will start having to deal with things, and, and, and we have to deal with other churches and all those kinds of things. He said, look, these things are coming. And he said, uh, first uh, two it says, then the twelve who were the what? They were the apostles called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and do what? Serve. Meaning that they were dedicated to hearing God's word and teaching God's word. He said, It's not good for us to have to deal with these activities, even though these activities are very important. Why is that true? Everybody's got a role. Everybody's got a role, right? It's like if, if, a, if, a, if a CEO had to vacuum the building. Wouldn't that be an issue? Mm -hmm. He might say, hey, great, I'm not I do this to me. Deal with you crazy people. But it, it's not good. It's not good. The roles have to be defined. The roles have to be done. So what happened is these brothers got so inundated with the day-to-day, -day, they were needing help. Right? So let's keep reading. He said, wherefore, brethren, look out, look ye out, among where? Seven Among, where did you look though? He looked in the church. Did he get on monster.com looking for church people? He said, look among you. And this was the qualification. He said, look among you, uh, out among you, seven men of what? Honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over the business. See, even these brothers had to be overseen. See, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They had to, somebody had to lay hands on them. But they had to have the qualifications of being honest and full of the Holy Ghost. Because no matter what role you play in the church, those are the first two qualifications you must be. Amen? Amen. Wherefore, brethren, we said in verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. See, there needs to be that role being taken care of and the other roles that need to be taken care of. But all of them got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So it'll be done according to God's word. He said in verse 5, and the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose who? Stephen. Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Pro Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Paramias, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, 
whom they set before the apostles. And when they had what? Prayed. Pray. They did what? Pray. Yes. We'll get to that at a later date. So there are other positions, back with better word. But all of them have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? So there's an order to a church. We see this. Amen. And we'll go to Ephesians and we'll get you out of here. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's start at 11. And we're going to go back up in a minute. We'll start at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And it says, He gave some what? Apostles. Apostles. A role. Amen? Amen? Then He did what? Some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and what? Teachers. Teachers. There's a lot of roles here, right? In the church. The order, the government of the church is for this reason. For the what? Perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. That is why the order is set, and this is the function of that order, to edify to, to enhance the understanding of people. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure or stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cutting craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. We keep jumping out of order. That's what's going to happen to us. We'll be listening to everybody. That sounds good. Oh, that sounds good today. Oh, I want to follow that person. Oh, Joyce Meyer said something good today. That's going to be... Would you settle in Jesus and just let him do what he does? There'll be... Now, we're not... Please, don't, don't misunderstand this. God has many voices. If many. And we'll never tell you this is the only depository of truth. No way. If you hear somebody say that, leave. God ain't going to give us all. We can't hold nothing. <laughs> but God will be consistent in all of his things. Amen? Amen. Amen. But stop chasing, chasing selfish, self, selfish doctrine. We call selfish doctrine this. The things I want to know about. The things that satisfy what I want to do. That's where I'm going. Because once that's fulfilled, you're going somewhere else. He said, you'll never be able to come into the knowledge of the truth. But he gave, let's go to, say it four, let's go up to one. We're going to close. I, therefore, the pre prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called, with all lowliness and meekness and longsuffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, amen, amen. and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. See, that never got canceled. Because we have churches in, in local locations, this never got canceled. We all one God, you know, in one God, right? By one spirit. But understand the government of God. He works locally for the betterment of all of us. And when we collaborate, which we need to do, because God gives them something. Amen? And when we come together, we get a bigger, broader picture of what we're supposed to be. But I'll tell you this. I promise you this. I'm not trying to, to pass to somebody else's church. And we're not going to let that happen here. Just know that. And be, you know, I'm not saying you've got to be all right with it. I'm not saying that. But you got to be all right with that. <laughs> because this is going to, we got to understand where we're about to go. And these things are foundational things we got to know. Because as we grow, we got we to gotta stay on this path. So, did we learn that God has an order? Yeah, that's right. That He has several churches. Okay? And that we can work together. And locally, 
we need to understand how to function as a body. We are not a glorified Bible state. You can't treat us that way. Well, I went over here, and I heard this, and I went over here, and I heard, you can go anywhere you want to, but when you come in here, this is what we are, okay? And when you come in here with some foreign doctor that you heard from somebody at the, you know, wherever you were, we're going to run it through Jesus. Just run it through Jesus. Because it might be Jesus told that person to tell that person to tell you, amen. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to sit in there rejoice and say, man, we learned something new today. But oh, if it ain't right. <laughs> we become the insulin. We insulate, we isolate it, insulate it, and make sure it gets out. Not the person, just the doctor. Amen? Because we don't want anybody infected by it. Are you okay with that? Amen. So that went too hard, wasn't it? No. All right, it's that word.